pleasant day to all. We hope everyone is keeping themselves safe and healthy during this COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you for attending this event in line with our new marketing brand campaign, the Make It Happen in the Philippines. To promote our country as an attractive and reliable destination for investments. In particular, we want to highlight our country's competencies on highly specialized electronics subsectors while also promoting our electronics manufacturing services or EMS. Our two nations share a long history of trade, culture, and economic ties. In 2019, the U.S. was the Philippines' third major trading partner top export market, and fourth top import supplier. Bilateral trade between the Philippines and the U.S. last year amounted to 19.6 billion U.S. dollars, higher than the 18.7 billion U.S. dollars in 2018. Moreover, our balance of trade in that period was at a positive $3.49 billion, higher than the previous year's $2.57 billion. Furthermore, the U.S. was our sixth top partner in approved investments in 2019 with $226.45 million U.S. dollars. And in the first quarter of this year, you were already our second top partner with $112.98 million U.S. dollars. Prior to the pandemic, our country established very strong economic fundamentals. We were growing at an average of 6.6% over the period of 2016 to 2019, and we were the third fastest growing economy in Asia and second in the ASEAN region. In 2019, our per capita GDP was projected to breach the $4,000 mark, and we were expected to become an upper middle income country by 2020 if COVID-19 had not happened. Our astute monetary policy enabled us to have low and stable inflation rates averaging at 2.5% in 2019. Last year, we had a strong fiscal position whereby we achieved highest revenues and lowest debt as shares of GDP. We also had among our lowest unemployment rate at 5% level in 2019, and we even received the highest ever credit ratings in the range of triple B plus and A minus from credit rating agencies. Our strong growth was supported by the resurgence in our manufacturing sector. The average value added growing by almost 34% for the five-year period 2010 to 2014 to 2015 to 2019. The manufacturing sector nearly accounted for 20% of the Philippine economy and our total merchandise exports were on an uptrend. However, due to the global pandemic, the Philippines registered its first economic contraction in two decades, in the first quarter of 2020. But we are now seeing improvement as our GDP growth rate improved from negative 16.5 in the second quarter of this year to negative 11.5 in the third quarter. Our export performance after dropping by half in April this year is already better than last year at positive 2% growth rate by September, driven by increase in the export of copper and other mineral products, chemicals, and electronic products. Furthermore, our net foreign direct investment or FDIs went up from 41% as of July to 47% last August, and this has been growing for four consecutive months. The investment approvals registered by the Philippine Board of Investments is on track to hit the 1 trillion pesos for the year, the second highest mark in the agency's history. For the first three quarters of 2020, investment approvals already reached over $15 billion. Despite the setbacks and challenges brought about by the pandemic, the Philippines still remains a conducive place to do business and is considered one of the top emerging economies and countries for investments. Reputed business magazine, The Economist, ranked the country as the sixth emerging economy with high financial strength. CEO World Magazine placed Philippines within the top 10 countries to invest in post-COVID. Both the World Bank and the IMF also predict a good economic recovery for the country, with forecasts of 6.2% to 6.8% respectively by 2021. 
Hence, we are working on rebuilding the economy's robust growth at the same level, if not higher than the pre-COVID levels. We are seeing our economy responding fast as we relax the quarantine protocols in the country. This gives us confidence that we are poised for a good rebound in 2021. The way forward for us is to build back better as we stay the course for a better future for our country. We need to aim for a modern, dynamic, and responsible Philippines. This is what our new industrial strategy is all about. The Rebuild PH or Revitalizing Businesses, Investments, Livelihoods, and Domestic Demand. This is our economic recovery plan amidst the pandemic and is anchored on the vision of our president, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, to create a modern, dynamic, and responsible Philippines. It is aimed at jump-starting and reinvigorating the Philippine economy by revitalizing consumption and enhancing production capacity. On the demand side, it starts with government support via the economic stimulus to save thousands of companies to keep jobs. This is important to re-stimulate the purchasing power and demand to attract more production activities and create a better business environment for investments. On the supply side, we should enhance production capacities, especially in agriculture, industries, and services to help build our expert competitiveness and manage imports. This creates a cycle of sustained and growing economic activity with strong domestic linkages. The infusion of more FDIs plays a dual critical role in our country's economic development. It addresses the supply chain gaps in production, and it also provides for the physical and digital infrastructure to enable the modernization of Philippine industries. At this juncture, let me reiterate why U.S. businesses should invest in the Philippines Aside from the fact that our economy was one of the fastest growing before the pandemic, the Philippines offers a domestic market of 110 million people and access to an ASEAN market that is more than 600 million people. Our country also has access to key markets through our free trade agreements and the EU generalized scheme of preferences plus or GSP plus and we are also favored by your country's generalized system of preferences. The recent conclusion of the Regional Mega Free Trade Agreement, the RCEP, or the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, is further expected to strengthen the Philippine advantage. This agreement signals a renewed vow on a rules-based system for trade and investments in the region with key trade partners that account for 30% of the world's GDP and population, as well as 28% of global trade. Meanwhile, our labor force stands at 49 million and we produce 750,000 annual graduates with wage rates among the most stable in the region. Furthermore, the increase of manufacturing costs in the Philippines is more stable compared to neighboring ASEAN countries. With this in mind, Philippines offers itself as a strategic partner in services with its large, young, educated, and the tech-savvy population. This is a resource that will be critical in responding to the challenges and opportunities in the digital and interconnected new economy. As foreign companies pursue expansion strategies, they can partner with the Philippines with its excellent track record in supporting global operations of companies from all over the world. The strong customer service orientation of our workforce also makes the Philippines an ideal location for services getting in touch with its customers globally. We have also risen in the Global Innovation Index, GII 2020, to 50th out of 131 countries from 54th in 2019. This is the first time that the Philippines has reached the top 50. Moreover, the GII recognizes the country as an innovation achiever for the second year in a row. From 2014, we were just in the 100s, and now we are in the 50th rank. Just recently, our country got a much-needed boost as we ranked among the safest economies 
in the world. The Philippines placed 12th among the 50th countries based on the highly respected Gallup's 2020 Global Law and Order Report. It's worth noting that we are in the same level as Australia and New Zealand. What's more, the recent passing of the Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentives Reform Act at the Senate will not only help our efforts in economic recovery, but also push tax reforms. We would also like to highlight that during the pandemic period, the Philippines did not impose import or export restrictions. In fact, the importation of health equipment and supplies deemed critical or needed to address COVID-19 public health emergency was given exemption from duties and taxes and fees under Republic Act Number 11469 or the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act. Import requirements of much needed medical supplies, equipment, and protective equipment as COVID-19 critical commodities were also streamlined. As our country navigates this fast-changing world that forecasts an unstable future for many businesses, we face the challenges of the new normal head-on with our new Make It Happen in the Philippines international marketing campaign. This campaign highlights the Philippines' strength and adaptability to weather through these challenges. We are confident that our new marketing campaign will promote our country's roll up your sleeves, make it work mindset that makes us a unique and attractive investment for foreign investors in particular, the electronics manufacturing services. To conclude, in light of the strong economic partnership between the Philippines and the U.S., it is only natural that our country becomes the investment destination for American businesses going global. Thus, even as the Philippine government is working hard towards the country's recovery against COVID-19, the administration of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte is committed to continue our economic growth story. As we do so, we will create more jobs and employment for the Filipino people, which will give them a better and more comfortable quality of life. That is why we call on our American investors to take a closer look at how you can partner with the Philippines. You will see how we can ably support your business expansion plans and provide you with a deeper insight on how to make it happen in the Philippines. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay tayong lahat.